Obviously, there's a huge component of discipline required to go to the gym six, seven days per week. But then again, when you think about it, if it's something that you enjoy and that you've seen benefits for, how much is discipline really a component of that? As what I wonder, because yeah, you know what? I was just talking about the Big Five personality test. I rate one out of one hundred for conscientiousness. No, so just something what you're just saying. You know, I mean, yeah, it's difficult for me to almost do things that if I'm not interested in it, right? That, so, it, so there is that. Like, I wonder, yeah, how much is it? You know, we we talk about it's so easy to write something about motivation or discipline that discipline trumps motivation. For some of us, it's easier, and but then you know anything outside fitness then you know pretty much incompetent or whatever or, or just can't there's no discipline for it because you just don't care for it there's no motivation yeah. for yeah. any of that so yeah. does discipline really apply to fitness in that regard oh, for I, you I, I interesting agree but then you know I also question and this isn't to take away personal responsibility but you know nature over nurture you know I mean our genetic predisposition compared to the environment or whatever you know it's a combination but how often do you really ask yourself but I mean the whole thing about free will we're just following things that are in our nature if you take the big five, they rate high on the conscientiousness. Like, you know, what my nephews, you know, he's like high 90s percentile, right? I mean, if you put weight into the, those personality tests and uh, so some people have the nature to be more disciplined. So with training, I'm curious, are you at this point, when do you go? Do you have to psych yourself up to go to the gym at this point? Or is it like right now I've been, I have a playlist of classical music, Ludo, Ludovico, I can't pronounce his name. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Is that uh, classical music? Yeah, modern uh, composer, I guess. And the playlist is about an hour and 17 minutes now. So when I get to the gym, as soon as I start it, by the time it finishes, I stop my workout. And now I try to limit my workout. I try to limit it just so that I can be productive, like painting was. If I kill myself in the gym, I don't feel like painting or being productive. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like in the last year that I actually realized maybe that my, like my career hasn't gone off. I used to spend like two and a half hours at the gym and then, I, you know, I have no energy for anything else to be productive. Yes. And you're making a living doing that to some extent now, I think, right? You have a website, uh, people buy your paintings. Yeah. I mean, I've been selling more and more paintings and yeah, it's not just like guys that buy them. It's actually women too. Like, I think you've been, you've been training longer than I've been alive. Not to make you feel old, uh, King, but that's, that's. How old are you? That's longevity. I'm uh, turning 30 this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shit. Right? Yeah. Overall, like close to probably 40, over 40 years. I was like 12 years old when I started, but I can't say that I was consistent since I was 12 years old. You know what I mean? I was very consistent from the age of 30. The only time that I was sort of, all that consistency was like sort of broken up was during the lockdown. Before that, I think two weeks was the longest I was ever away from a gym and even then I would be you know that was when I went to France with my uh, girlfriend and I would still do calisthenics or I would bring a skipping rope you know but most of the last 43 years I've been training the physique that you built prior to let's just say the lockdown because the lockdown obviously threw a bunch of stuff off right to that point obviously you try different methods you know you do train to failure you've done that you did the high intensity thing you do volume you train with a lot of volume you've done two days now I just want to maybe dive into a few details because I've heard you talk about training to failure before talking about training with high amounts of volume. Do you think there's one aspect of this continuum that leans more towards or favors more towards building muscle than the other? I'm curious your thoughts on this. I guess, you know, you could say that training to failure, like with as much volume, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, I'm sort of still leaning towards that, uh, more volume like I really question in terms of hypertrophy especially with longevity in mind do you really need to deadlift or squat more than two plates for anybody that's like you know say even under 200 pounds lean especially yeah do they need to you know for to optimize hypertrophy like from a motivation standpoint I understand yes and you know like myself my lower back injuries it wasn't because of lifting heavy. It was because I was a fucking idiot. Like, I mean, mm. I was like, trying to push how uh, mobile I was. 
Like I would squat until I sat to the floor, until my butt, you, you know, I was like trying to. You were pushing boundaries, so my, ranges, ranges of yeah, motion that you didn't yeah. need to be in basically. I think that was a big factor more than weight. But at the same time, I question whether we do need to go as heavy. I mean, my own perspective is, yeah, I have my own biases or whatever, right? And Which I'm curious about, your biases. I am curious about that. And I'm sure the listeners are too, because you've been through a lot, right? So where are your stances on that now? Like, do you, do you think, I, how important do you think training to failure is for hypertrophy, really? No, I, I would say it's not necessary. I mean, if you do enough volume, so again, yeah, I don't think you need to. If you don't have enough time, then, you know, throw and take any set to failure or close to failure. And that makes it good enough, if that makes sense. But if you have, yeah, yeah. If you have enough time, then, you know, I do pretty much, okay, let's just say uh, 10 to 20 minutes per body part. Like I would spend pretty much every day, you know. I do everything by intervals. I have a running clock. So I'll do sets of six low cable rows at two minute intervals. In 10 minutes, I'm, I can do six sets. By the end, are you struggling to complete a rep or are you not really getting to no. that point? No, no. Is that why you can hit body parts every day at this point, do you think? That's part of it. That's part of it. Mm. I think everything, if, if you give your body enough time to adopt to any any kind of load or, you know, consistent load or whatever. I've been holding push-up Zoom call every day oh, right. at 9.42 a.m. Eastern Standard yes. Time. For 20 minutes, we do 20 sets in 20 minutes. Okay. We passed day 500 a couple of weeks ago. Or like two weeks ago, maybe. And there was like one guy, he hasn't missed a day yet. I haven't missed 20 minutes of push-ups yet since we started, but I've missed a couple of the Zoom calls myself. So I rarely do any bench presses because like, you know, all the push-ups, I, I, that's my horizontal push. Maybe once a week, I'll do some chest, but I'm content with it. Okay. So I'm not saying it's impressive, but I'm content with it that doing the 20 minutes of push-ups allows me to maintain two plates for a strict rep set of five. Like I'll do bench press every six months just to test it. Interesting. And it's been pretty much there, you know what I mean, with a push-up. So I'm I'm content with that. Because like, right. I mean, if I had to push it, bring it up at about, you know, maybe 165 pounds body weight, that's where my bench press is. Like the most I've ever done was three plates for two reps. Okay. Yeah. Or 324 singles. But it okay. was like touch and go. It wasn't like paused. You were never into the powerlifting strength feats anyways, right? No. 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 If you look at someone and where like you take someone like a Serge Nubre, if you read the forums on how he used to train from what he mentioned too, he never trained to failure. He used like a lot of, lot of oh, volume. Uh, he was a big influence. Like it, my, his whole approach. I mean, until he died. He was like in his late 60s. He was still guest posing. He still looked pretty yeah. good. And okay, and again, I think what we were talking about, I alluded to that earlier, was that as we get more slow twitch muscle fiber, then we need to train with higher volume. So I, I just think maybe I'm not saying not to train with any like heavy loads at all, but maybe with higher volume in mind altogether, you know, I mean, just slightly moving the volume all together, a bit higher in the intensity, a bit lower for the sake of longevity. When you think about it, Dorian Yates, yeah. his career was pretty much cut short because of his injuries. And he was like the big, you know, into high intensity, <laughs> Ronnie Coleman. You know what I mean? Like he was mm -hmm. like training just as heavy. I just think that who's to say like what's worth it. Arguably Ronnie Coleman was the GOAT because he trained that way. And just as we were talking about with nature, the same nature that took him up there sort of prevented him from pressing the brakes when he should have. He kept going back even after surgery, you know, he wanted to start continue lifting heavy. I think when you're trying to build or reach your potential, we never know if we've reached it or not, but if you're trying to get to that point where I think there's a level of extreme behavior that's required, whether it's you're playing the game of, let me go high intensity, high, high, high effort, or let me go high volumes to a point where I don't really think you can be in the middle of both extremes. I think you have to lean towards one in order to really maybe reach a potential. Oh, I, I totally agree. And mm. I, but I, when people talk about, okay, 
and correct me, like tell me right now, I mean, when they talk about high volume in terms of studies, how many sets do you think they say? Pretty much 20 sets is high volume? I would say so. 20 sets would be considered yeah. high. Per, per muscle group per week would be considered high volume at this point. Or per I exercise. Think- yeah, would that be that be high volume, right? If for, to do for for a single exercise, that would be high. Yeah, that'd be ridiculously yeah. high. I think right already, or even probably ten sets would be already considered high volume for yeah one yeah exercise. for one exercise. Yes, yes. All right, but remember, part of my goal was like to do two thousand pull ups at the end of the year since two thousand thirteen, and by September I would prepare for start up in my volume. So I was doing you know an hour multiple times a week more than an hour like so 60 sets i wasn't overtrained. i gave my body time to adopt it i was only doing maybe sets of six at one minute intervals you know when i was doing that you know i think my back sort of maintained more muscle mass in my late 40s do you know what i mean where other body parts were decreasing more my back because of the high volume of pull-ups. You know, I think there's a point where enough volume can definitely compensate for the low intensity, if that makes sense. I would say of the era of that time, it was, they, did high volume. They, did, they did high volume. They did two a days. Volume. Yeah. So yeah, there were some bodybuilders that periodized it. That's something to consider. But someone like Serge Nubre is an example, I think. I read his like routine he posted on bodybuilding.com back in the late 2000s, right? And because I read it wrong, I think he was doing 16 sets total or eight sets total per body part. Like So he would combine barbell curls with overhead dumbbell extensions right. going back and forth. I forget whether he did eight sets per exercise or 16 sets per exercise, but... I misread and I did double, I think. I did, you know, yeah, I did, so I did 32 sets. But when you think about it, say you go to say 16 sets total, eight sets per for each exercise. Yeah. You're just about to go back and forth without resting. So yeah. it'll take you maybe 16 minutes at most. To complete that, you have to use really light loads and you're supposed to just go back and forth. Just to complete that volume, yeah, you have to use really light loads just so it's not overtraining in a way. And then you're, you yeah. know, then later your body does adapt to it too. If you're doing consistently. I don't think high volume where I'm considering it, taking it, is necessarily better, like more optimal. And, you know, that may be better for in terms of longevity. That's as far as I would make any claims that that is the best way, you know. All I focus now on is protein and calories. It just depends on the calories, you know what I mean? Where, where I'm at for the most part, right? I mean, like, um, I've been thinking about that as I get older, maybe I will actually have to pay more attention to micronutrients and everything else. I've gone away with not paying attention to them, but now, or maybe in the near future, I might have to. 